Hey everyone! Okay, so I don't usually do response videos, but Reason TV just made the worst video on earth trying to distance themselves from Charlottesville, and I just can't help myself. There is too much solid gold in this video to, uh, to not jump into it. So here we go. Some news outlets have claimed there's a troubling pipeline from libertarianism to the most revolting corners of the alt-right movement. Anyone who claims to care about individual liberty should reject the overt racism in Charlottesville. Okay, well, I don't like Nazi LARPers too much either, but last time I checked, individual liberty includes the right to hate whoever the hell you want, and to LARP as whatever you want. So sorry, libertarians at reason, yes, your ideology can and does have racists within it. The very core of liberty defends the right to be racist, no matter how much mental gymnastics you play to convince the public otherwise. The broadly defined alt-right and the watered-down alt-light variants represented by provocateurs like Milo Yiannopoulos and YouTube personalities Stefan Molyneux and Laura Southern. Laura Southern. Laura Southern. As well as the right-wing nationalism pushed by recently fired White House strategist Steve Bannon. These expressions of right-wing populism are the antithesis of libertarianism, and they collapse under their own logic. We'll see about that. <laughs> I think it's more accurate to say that the alt-right cares about Western supremacy rather than white supremacy. Western civilization is our birthright. It makes all good things possible. Undefended, it collapses. The fundamental question of our time is whether the West has the will to survive. The alt-right claims to be the savior of Western civilization, which apparently is on the brink of collapse because Muslims and Mexicans are invading our society. They come to countries, they, they rape women, they're having a very difficult time learning not to rape women. Once you replace one population with another, it will not be the same. Not even close. You know, when you bring the third world to the first world, you don't get the first world. You get the third world. Members of the alt-right Guess I'm alt-right now. point to the sizable influx of immigrants to Europe in the wake of destabilizing Middle Eastern wars. But America isn't Europe. Okay, so this is my favorite part of the video. He jokingly says, oh ho ho, Muslims are going to ruin Western civilization, as if that's not going to happen in Europe, plays a bunch of videos, including my own, where I am exclusively talking about Europe, then as I'm intently waiting for his response to see how he's going to prove that this massive influx of Muslims is not a problem in Europe, he just says, But America isn't Europe. Dude, you admitted there is a flood of immigrants into Europe, and then you just brush that off as if it's not happening. Like, no shit, Sherlock, America isn't Europe. That's the whole damn point. People don't want it to become Europe, which evidently you know has a problem because you just ignore the entire continent's existence for the rest of this video. Anyways, so now that we've gotten all of Europe out of the way by just ignoring its existence, he, he shifts the goalpost to something else. Here's a straightforward look at immigrants as a percentage of the U.S. population. Sure, there's an upswing since around the end of the Vietnam War, but really it's a return to the historical average. And what was going on here in the late 19th and early 20th centuries as immigrants flooded in? The Second Industrial Revolution. Cars, steel, electricity, telecommunication, and America's rise as a global economic superpower. Want to make America great again? Maybe free-flowing immigration combined with an open marketplace is the winning formula. <laughs> well, I can safely say that you and Richard Spencer would be high-fiving at your earlier point about immigrants in the early 1900s creating tons of innovation, because those were immigrants almost exclusively from Europe, who were already well assimilated into the culture, immediately got jobs, spoke the language, and were not moving into a massive welfare state. Pretending modern immigration from the third world in a welfare state will create that kind of boom again? is so disingenuous, it may as well just be blatant lying. But let's get back to those Western values. 
America's founders based their ideas on Enlightenment values such as individual property rights and free trade, as articulated by philosophers like John Locke and Adam Smith. Those founding fathers who definitely didn't want the vote to just be for landowning males and who, who were totally pro any effing idiot who comes over here and wants welfare check immigration policy. And who did they build their ideas in opposition to? Mercantilists, protectionists, or what we today would call economic nationalists. If you asked, say, Adam Smith about trade in an economy where local trinket makers under tons of regulations are competing with child slave labor halfway around the world, where planes, trains, and automobiles exist and governments are manipulating their currencies and giving subsidies to businesses, uh, I think his assessment would be a little different today. Post Charlottesville, Trump's recently fired chief strategist Steve Bannon told a reporter that white ethno-nationalists are losers and clowns. And then he made a case for economic nationalism. So wait, you get Bannon calling ethno-nationalists losers and clowns, and yet continue to lump him, Milo, Stefan, and myself all under the banner of the alt-right with Spencer and everyone. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Any individual country by itself, on the average, tends to benefit from free trade regardless of what the other countries do. Don't believe him? Well, recent polling finds the majority of economists agree that free trade is a net benefit. Wow, you know, I heard the majority of political science teachers think that libertarianism is retarded. They're experts in their field, so they must be right. Trump's fans can cheer when he pressures companies to locate their manufacturing plants in America, but these success stories unravel with closer scrutiny. So encouraging companies to stay and produce in the U.S. by lowering taxes is bad. I thought libertarians were supposed to be business friendly. Just like the progressive left, the alt-right wants to empower the federal government, just as long as the right people are in power, doling out benefits to their favorite constituencies. This is why you'll hear alt-right leaders speaking favorably of single-payer health care. When we enter this new stage where we're talking about national programs, where we're talking about we have a basic income program. We have a healthcare program. There is a lot of disagreement with Spencer on single-payer healthcare. There is absolutely no consensus there, even among the alt-right. Once again, I really think reason needs to define alt-right and clarify who they're talking to, because I sure as hell don't want to grow the government, and I know people like Stefan Molyneux don't want to grow the state. Who are you talking to? You can't keep jumping back and forth between Bannon and Richard Spencer and Ann Coulter. Pick someone. Some right-wing populists have even advocated using the power of the state to force private tech companies to be run like quasi-governmental public utilities. Since it has the power to censor the internet, Google should be regulated like the public utility it is to make sure it doesn't further distort the free flow of information. You know what? I used to be against Google being regulated at all because, like you, I'm for private company rights and capitalism. But oh wait, they're not really a private company and it's not really capitalism with Google, is it? It's crony capitalism, where Google works with the government, gets government subsidies and tax breaks, and people can't compete with them because of that. Even Obama said that Google and Facebook would not exist without the federal government. So why does the philosophy so at odds with its core values attract any defectors from the libertarian movement? Well, what's most appealing are the alt-right's opposition to foreign wars, its nominal defense of free speech, and a valid-sounding critique of PC excess. After all, Milo Yiannopoulos made a name for himself as a provocateur on campus. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. The truth is that the alt-right's commitment to free speech runs about an inch deep. Many have engaged in similar behaviors as the politically correct progressives they decry, forming online mobs and boycotts to encourage private entities to fire commentators like Kathy Griffin and Reza Aslan for political speech deemed offensive. And they've shut down modernized stagings of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar for the offense of depicting the assassination of a Trump-like lead character. Security, please. Real interesting that you separated the alt-light and the alt-right at the start of this video, then completely conflate them here. 
Opposition to Loomer and Posobiec's protest came from the vast majority of actual alt-right leaders and members, such as Richard Spencer, and Loomer and Posobiec are probably more closely aligned with reason than anyone on the alt-right. They've cheered a sitting president's threats to sue publications that criticize him and his willingness to shut out journalists whose coverage he doesn't like. Yeah, you know what? We should we should just get rid of all defamation laws and people should be allowed to openly publish and promote lies to the American people. Hey, reason. Every single one of you who works there is a pedophile, and this allegation is going to be repeated in every major publication and on every news network. Oh, what? You you want to sue me for defamation of character now that nobody views your site because they don't want to support child molesters? Why are you guys being such fascists? Why do you hate free speech? The alt-right's America First nationalism engenders a skepticism of foreign military intervention that's sorely lacking in Washington. And that's what's most compelling about the alt-right and the political realignment it's forced, with former conservative hawks like Ann Coulter calling out Trump for troop surges in the Middle East. But even this anti-interventionism is soft ground, because if you delve into the mind of a figure like Steve Bannon, you'll uncover a nightmare vision of a world already engaged in global warfare. We are in an outright war against jihadist, Islam, Islamic fascism. Wait, are you suggesting that Bannon is wrong? We aren't at war with jihadis? You ever heard of ISIS? Because you may not be at war with them, but they sure as hell have declared war against you and most of Western civilization. The alt-right ultimately amounts to a backwards-looking movement, and that's what's most concerning. It's telling that their beloved slogan, Make America Great Again, both harkens back to a mythical time that never existed and was ripped off from Ronald Reagan. The alt-right is about recapturing a non-existent past through vague but misleading appeals to Western values. Libertarians are the true defenders of the Enlightenment and present a forward-looking vision that centers on the power of individuals to create their own experiences, make their own choices, and foster a more peaceful world. You're absolutely right. Western values is a wishy-washy term that has absolutely zero meaning, unlike the Enlightenment, which is completely concrete and, of course, everybody knows is reflected exactly in the policies of libertarians today, like gay marriage and legalizing weed. If that's not for you, stick with the alt-right or its spin-offs. Just know what you're signing up for. All I gotta say is, if our future depends on libertarians like you, we are screwed. Because the reality is, you guys at Reason are not really libertarians at all. You're corporatists who are willing to sell out your ideology, your nation, and your freedom to shill terrible advice from the Koch brothers who fund you massively and are very anti-Trump and pro-mass immigration. Luckily, it looks like most people aren't buying your bullshit though, and good on them because you're full of it.